Hello guys, so today we're gonna be solving this beautiful 2013 International Mathematical Olympiad number theory problem. First of all, a small caveat, if you don't know any of the notation tools, whatever I'm using, then I highly encourage you to check out my YouTube channel where I have full-on lectures explaining each and every one of the tools I use every day. Don't do making those videos. Anyway, let's just go on and solve this problem. So we're supposed to prove that for any pair of natural numbers n and k, we can find k more natural numbers m sub 1 up to m sub k, such that this awful expression of 1 plus to the power of k minus 1 all over n is equal to this even more awful product of 1 plus the reciprocal of m sub 1 multiplied by 1 plus the reciprocal of m sub 2, and we're multiplying stuff out together up to 1 over the reciprocal of m sub k. So how do you even approach this problem? I mean, it looks just bad, doesn't it? You, know, you see, I'm thinking we have quite a lot of things depending on k in this problem. Here we have this k in the exponent of the 2. Well, those m's actually we have k of them. So we have two things depending on k in this problem. So I'm thinking maybe we could try induction on k. Well, it's so nice, let's try and do it. So, if I wanted to induct on k in this problem, what should I do? What is, what is my base case? Well, k is actual, so the least k I can choose is 1. So the base case will be just, well, k equal to a 1. And so, what's, what's going to be? Well, I'm going to get 1 plus 2 to the power of 1 minus a 1 all over, well, some kind of an n. And I'm supposed to find a m1 such that, such that is equal to 1 over 1, mm, 1 plus 1 over m sub 1. Love well, actually to the power of 1 minus 1 is just 1, and so I have 1 plus reciprocal of n is equal to 1 plus reciprocal of m1, m sub 1. So I'm just choosing m sub 1 equal to n, and well, this satisfies my, this satisfies my base case. Beautifully. So we have the base case achieved and we can move forward. So, yeah, what do we have to do now? Well, it would be kind of nice to do the induction step, maybe. And so, proving that the statement holding for k will imply the statement holding for k plus 1. And so, for that I will just well, go and assume this statement for k. So I would, I would like to assume that there exists a particular natural number k such that for any natural number n, this is important, for any natural number n, 1 plus the power of k minus 1 over n is equal to, well, this awful product. I mean, we can choose those n's such that it's equal to this product, yeah? Lovely. So after setting k equal to k plus 1, which sounds kind of weird, but you, you, you know what I'm getting at, yeah? So after doing that, how is my problem going to look like? Well, this will change into 1 plus 2 to the power of k plus 1 minus 1 all over n. And so, what is the form that I most desire this to be in? Well, I would like to write it in such a way that I have a product of two terms. The one, one, one of those terms will be 1 plus, well, 2 to the power of k I really want it to be k, because well, then I can just use my inductive, inductive assumption, minus some kind of a 1, and then I'm going to divide it by well, some kind of a natural number. It doesn't really have to be n, yeah, because I said that well, it can be any natural number. I mean, n can be any natural number. So I will just say that here I have some kind of an a, yeah, and then I will multiply it by some kind of 1 plus a reciprocal of some x, oh, no idea what x is, yeah? Lovely. But how can I actually get this expression to, well, transform so that it's gonna look something like this? Well, one might try something like this, maybe 1 plus 2 to the power of k plus 1 minus a1 all over n. What can I do with this expression? Well, some people will say, yeah, so, I will just erase this negative one from here, and I will add a reciprocal of n, so nobody accuses me of just, well, mindlessly subtracting stuff from my problem. And I will, maybe it will be possible to, you know, somehow 
factor on these two right here, and may, maybe maybe it will. No, it won't work. <laughs> like honestly, it won't work. If you want to try that, I highly encourage you to do so just for practice. But it's not going to work <laughs> because well, we're going to have some kind of addition here. We don't really want addition in this problem. We want multiplication, as much multiplication as we can get. And here we're adding this one over n. We have this one. It's not going to work. So how can we actually approach this problem from here? Well. I would really like to factor out that 2 from the numerator. I would really like that, because well, then I will just get 2 to the power of k. I mean, hopefully I will get this kind of expression. So how do I do this? Well, first of all, let me rewrite this expression as n plus 2 to the power of k plus 1 minus a1 all over n. So maybe it will be a little bit more clear what I'm doing. Well, actually, now is one nice thing. If I set yeah, that n is equal to 2 times some kind of a t minus a 1, well, then what is the question going to look like? I'm going to get 2 times t minus a 1 plus 2 to the power of k plus 1 and then minus another 1, yeah, minus another 1 everything divided by 2 times t minus 1. Well, that's lovely, because now I can just rewrite this as 2 times t plus 2 to the power of k plus 1 minus a2. And so, well, I absolutely can factor out the 2 from the numerator. The kind of an awful problem is that I have this 2t minus 1 in the denominator. You see, this is really nice, because now, even if I factor this 2 out here, it's not going to be in this form. There's no way I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting this form out of this expression right here. Well, it would be something completely different if this expression looks something like this. It would, if it would be 2 times t minus plus 2 to the k plus 1 of power minus a2, everything divided by 2 times t. Well, then it would be awesome, yeah? Because now I can just factor out the 2, divide everything by t, and I will just get 1 plus 2 to the power of k minus 1 over the t. It would be awesome, yeah? Yeah. But how do I actually do it? How do I get from 2 times t minus 1 to 2 times t? And here, I would like you to actually pay a little bit more attention to this factor for a few seconds. Well, what is 1 plus 1 over x? 1 plus 1 over x. Well, if I were to get those two to a common denominator, I will just get x plus 1 over x. Well, that's nice. Because well, this means that 1 plus 1 over 2 times t minus 1 is equal to what? 2 times t all over, no, 2 times t all over 2t minus 1. And why is this awesome? Well, let me, no, let me make up some space here on the board. Well, that's awesome, because we can actually go on and rewrite this expression. So, 2t plus 2 to the power of k plus 1 minus 2 all over 2 times t minus 1 as, well, 2t plus 2 to the k plus 1 power minus a2, everything divided by 2 t, not 2t minus 1, but 2t, multiplied by 2t, so those two will cancel each other out, divided by 2t minus 1. And, well, guys, those two will cancel each other out. This stuff right here is actually equal to 1 plus 1 over 2t minus 1. And this stuff right here, well, this is actually equal to 1, 1, 
Let me change the chalk. This one's dying. Yeah? So, is equal to 1, 1, yeah? Plus 2 to the power of k minus 1 all over t. And we are actually multiplying those. And so we got the desired form we wanted to. Yeah, we, which we designed actually because well, it was a desired form. So awesome, we got the problem proved. I mean, we got the problem solved, we got the, the same proved, but no, <laughs> we don't. Well, yeah, you see, not really, because we assumed here that n is equal to 2 times t minus 1. And so n is odd. What about evening? Well, we kind of left that out. And so now to be kind of nice to continue this problem and we'll prove it for the evening too. So I will just say that this problem is half is old, is old and I will you know, clean the board a little bit and come back to you with the final part of the solution. Okay guys, so moving forward, we are supposed to make the induction step once again and so we are once again supposed to prove that the statement holding for k will imply the statement holding for k plus 1. However, this time I will add the restriction that n is even, is equal to 2 times some kind of a t. I mean, it has to be. Now we are doing the second part of the problem, so we are supposed to prove this statement for n even. Whew, lovely. So how is this expression going to look like in terms of, well, even t and, well, provided we're doing the induction step so k becomes k plus 1. Well, it's going to look something like this. It's going to be 2 times t plus 2 to the power of k plus 1 minus 1, everything divided by 2 times t. Lovely, but the problem here is that, once again, we have negative 1 here, not negative 2. <laughs> you will, can really use the 2 times t here in the denominator, though it might have seemed like it's going to be useful. No, it isn't. We're going, to have it. We're going to have just as much trouble as we did in the previous part of the problem. So, you see, what do we really want from this expression? Well, we would love it to be something like this, 2 times t plus 2 to the power of k plus 1, a minus a 2, not a 1, but a 2, divided by 2 times t, because, well, then it would be just 1 plus 2 to the power of k minus 1 all over t, and we could use the inductive assumption. Yeah, but, you see, life is brutal, and it's not really that way, but, whoa, 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 wait. 2 times t plus 2 k plus 1 minus 2, 2 times t plus 2 k plus 1 minus 1. This numerator is this numerator, numerator minus a 1. Minus a 1. This numerator is this numerator plus a 1. But now, wait a second. 1 plus 1 over x. What was it? x plus 1 over x. What, what does it mean, guys? Yeah? What does it mean? It means that 1 plus 1 over 2 times t plus 2 to the k plus 1 of power minus a 2 is equal to 2 times t plus 2 to the k plus 1 of power minus a 1 all over 2 times t plus 2 to the k plus 1 of power minus 2. And that's also we can use the same trick that we used in the previous part of the problem, but now we can use it in this part of the problem, which is even more awesome, yeah? <laughs> so, well, now, knowing this, we can go and rewrite the expression 2 times t plus 2 to the power of k plus 1 minus 1 as what? Well, it's going to be 2 times t plus 2 to the power of k plus 1 minus 1 divided by 2 times t plus 2 to the power of k plus 1 minus a2, so this is 1 uh, plus 1 over the denominator here, and we just multiply this stuff, 
by 2 times t, oh sorry, <laughs> yeah, by 2 times t plus 2 to the power of k plus 1 minus a2, so those two will cancel each other out, but now, wait! 2 times t was the denominator in the original fraction, so we have to put 2 times t here. But this stuff right here, what is it? Well, this is just 1 plus, well, 2 to the power of k minus 1 over t. But what about this stuff? Well, this is just 1 plus 1 over 2 times t plus 2 to the power of k plus 1 minus 2. And so we got exactly the form we wanted. We got exactly the form we wanted because we got well, we got this expression to become, and I will just erase those two from the board, we got this expression to become 1 plus 1 over 2 times t plus 2 to the power of k plus 1 minus a 2 multiplied by 1 plus 2 to the power of k minus 1 all over t. We can use the inductive assumption here. We can just set the k, k plus 1 k plus 1, k plus first, m equal to this stuff right here. And guys, I call this a problem fully solved. Hope you enjoyed it. See you and goodbye.